Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. And laying out on this table before you is a completely disassembled 2005 Honda CRF450R. Now today, we're gonna to be concentrating on putting what I call the bottom end together. We've got the cases all cleaned up and we're gonna focus in on getting the transmission put back together, get all the seals and bearings pressed in, get the crankshaft in there and actually closing the bottom end back up. Now to do this, we're using a combination of parts, either OEM or a kit that comes from Wisco. Now let's step over to the table and take a look at what I chose to rebuild this particular motor. And what you see spread out on the table is far and away more than what we need to do the bottom end. This is actually part of a larger complete engine build, but today we're just focusing on the bottom end. And to do that, we've got a kit from Wiseco, and it's called a Garage Buddy. And inside of this kit, they include what you need to do the bottom end, such as the crankshaft, all your different seals, the bearings, the gaskets, the O-rings, everything, even a timing chain comes in this box and that is what we're going to be focused on today. There will be special tools that will be required to pull this off and I will call those out as we go along. So now that we've got our parts together, let's step back over to the table and start building this thing. We're going to start by pulling the main seals, then we're going to go over to the press, press out the old bearings, I've got the new bearings actually in the freezer, We're gonna bring those in, hopefully just be able to drop them in, maybe with a little heat on the cases, and then we'll be good to go. Now, if they don't drop all the way in, well, then we'll press them the rest of the way in if need be. So let's start by getting our old seals out. Really cool tool that makes it easy to pull these seals. We'll start with this one first, why not? So. Get all the dowels out. We are not reusing this. No way. That was way too traumatic. So, look at that. It's even trying to give me a hard time to get it out of here with a pair of vice grips. You can imagine how tough it was to get these, these uh, cases to separate. If you don't believe me, go look at the teardown video. Whew, it was brutal. It was completely corroded in there. And if that's happened to you, why don't you leave us a a comment in the section below. I'd like to hear about it. I was able to get it out of there by collapsing it down, then flipping it over, then using this drift to go in from the inside and pop it out. That was a lot of fun to separate when the cases were together. So now that we've got that dowel out of the way, let's go ahead and remove these two Torx bits, bolts, and then we can press that bearing out. And these are T30s. Feels like it's got Loctite on there, so we want to do that when we put it back together. Yep, blue. Watch your edges of the case. It's like the little razors. So. Okay. Just going to use a driver set, and this doesn't have to be really super accurate because we're not reusing this bearing anyway. But you don't want to use this one to drive in the new bearings, you want it to go all the way out to the outside edge. And we'll be using, I think, in this one when we go to reinstall it. Let's go. I'd say that one's about done. It shouldn't rock that much. All right, so let's go grab that other bearing out of the freezer and it may just drop in. No, it's gonna make me work for it. So we're just gonna line it up and just press it in. If I would have heated up the case, it probably would have dropped straight in, but I don't have an oven here, so I was just relying on the the freezer part of it, and that wasn't quite enough of a differential to pull this off. Now, if you had, a, had an oven, you could take it up to about 250 or so and make this process a little bit easier. Now, well, let's go ahead and get our retaining bolts back in. I'm just going to add back on some blue Loctite. All right, 
drop this little guy back in there. There we go. Ah, one down, one to go. Oh, look at that. That's going to work out well. Let's go. Yahtzee. Let me go grab the other one and then we'll pop her back in. Yeah, that's just not going to work without heating up the case. She tried to get wonky on me, but she's good to go. So now that we've got all the different seals greased up, let's go ahead and pre-lube all the different bearings on both cases. Now you can use just regular engine oil or assembly lube. I am gonna use the assembly lube on our larger bearings because this is pretty thick stuff and it has a better chance of staying on the bearings as we're putting it together. And our just regular engine oil for the smaller ones. Either one will be fine. We just want to make sure that there's some level of lubrication at first startup so we don't run any of these bearings dry. Very important. That should do it. We're going to tilt this up for a moment. And what we're going to do is bring in our, our transmission clusters next. Once we get it in there, then we'll tilt it back on its back. Now there's still a fair amount of oil on both of these, but we'll add in just a little bit more just to make sure, especially where the shift forks engage and down on the shaft. All right, guys, now granted, I kept all of my gears together, but as, if yours have fallen apart or one of them's come off, please refer to this comprehensive diagram and make sure you've got everything in the right order before you go putting it together because one shim or one washer either missing or out of place and this is not going to operate right. So take your time and make sure you get this part right. Next we can bring in our shift forks and you've got three of them. You've got one that is marked with a 4C and then you've got the other two which are 4R and 4L. So 4R would be the right side of the crankcase, and it's, so that's going to be on the bottom. 4L is going to be on the upper part, and then of course your C is going to go to that center point. So we want to go and install it first. We we'll would engage it into the gear, but then just hold off that pin to the side because we have to have room to get the shift drum in there. R and our L. Okay. A little bit more oil. Now we bring in our shift drum. There we go. What we'll do is we'll get the crank in there and then we'll do a quick test just to make sure everything's shifting right. Then we'll do the final installation of the second case half. But just as a precaution, I'd rather go through it, make sure she shifts through all the gears, and then do final assembly. So let's go ahead and install our crank. Before we do so, let's make sure we get some oil down in there. I mean, they come pre-lubed, but why not just a little bit more? So what we're gonna do next is take this case half, leave your dowels out, do yourself a favor. Attach it temporarily. Just to let you know in a hurry if you've got any alignment issues. There she goes. Then we're gonna flip it over, remove this side, and then we can continue. Kind of strange, I know, but hey, this is the way Honda wants you to do it. So that's the way we're gonna go. I guess you understand now why I told you not to put in the dowels yet. One pin came out, but that's okay. As predicted, one of the washers decided it would stay with the case, so we want to get that back in place. There is not a washer there, so 
we are good to go. What I'm going to do next is clean both of these surfaces, make sure there's no oil on them at all, install the dowel pins, get in our reed valve, and then our oil pump. Go ahead and get a fresh towel, hold it off to the side, because we don't want the contact spray going inside the cases. We just want to clean up the outside real quick. I mean, they're already pretty much spotless, but let's make sure because it is important that especially this section through here that separates the crankcase from the transmission, sometimes those intermingle. And I have heard stories of oil getting transferred from one side to the other, and that's not supposed to happen. It overfills one side and starves the other. When you're doing this, check for any abnormalities any cuts, any grooves, especially because that is such a thin area that we're sealing or separating these two cavities. And what you might not be able to see, your fingers can pick up. But do be aware that these edges are sharp and they can open you up. Now let's go ahead and get our dowels in. Our one-way reed valve, make sure that that Phillips screw is facing up and is toward the back. Next, let's get our oil pump shaft and then the inner and outer rotor installed. Get that oiled up. There we go. Add just a little bit more in there. It's weird how this thing works. Draws in oil and presses it out the other side. See, <laughs> it even started to press that out. It draws it in, compresses it, and squirts it out. How this manages to uh, do the entire engines is kind of cool. All right, she's lubed up and ready to go. So when you put on the gasket, leave this top section in because that is what's going to hold all this in, in place. And you run the risk of it not lining up correctly and then leaking, of course. So we'll leave that in place until we get the other half put on, get it torqued down, and then we'll carefully trim this bit off. Looks like everybody's lined up. Let's see if we can get this other half to shimmy in place. That's what we want. Shouldn't have to hit it. It should just drop into place. That is a good sign that every, everything's lined up properly. Now at this point, we can take a soft mallet and just lightly tap around the edge to really get it to seat. Then we'll start putting in our bolts and we'll torque them down in a crisscross pattern. Get the detent in place for the gear shift and then we'll run it through all the gears just to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. If we run into a problem, which I don't foresee at this point, then now will be the time to pull it back apart versus, well, I don't know, when you're at the track and then you need to figure out you got a problem. No, if it's, if it's got an issue, we need to find it now. But so far, everything's looking good and feeling right. But now we need to flip it over, and if you've got an engine stand, great. I'm just gonna work off of these two covered two by fours. I mean, do I have an engine stand? Yes, be glad to sell you one, but we're just gonna do this one on the table. Now, what we're going to do next is lay out all our bolts over on this towel and then transfer them over one at a time. And what I did is I went back and looked at the exploded parts diagrams and I've laid out each bolt going clockwise, starting with the drain bolt and that'll carry me all the way around the cases to get all the bolts in the correct place. Because for whatever reason, Honda uses like four different links for just this one side of the, the crankcase. But hey, that's all right. And any bolts that are actually on the inside, I prefer to use Loctite on those. Blue will be just fine. But anything on the inside of the crankcase, I usually put Loctite on it. You pretty much know if you've got them in the 
right location because you should have roughly 10 millimeters from the, the base of the bolt itself to where it engages with the crankcase. Now keep in mind there are three where you're going to have a copper washer and they're pretty easy to identify because the two on the outside there's actually a little arrow and that indicates yes you need to have one of those copper washers in that place. The other one that is not marked but requires a copper washer is this top one where your counterbalance is actually going to be going through. Then there's one over here, it's that little arrow. And now we actually need to grab our clutch arm, put a little bit of lube on it, get it in place because this particular bolt is also the retaining part of it. So that goes together like that. Then we've got a bracket here. One long one. One more down at the bottom. Well, there you go. They are all in place. Now I'm going to go around, bring them down just a little over hand tight. And we're going to go through in a crisscross pattern. I'm going to tighten them down. And as I do that, we're going to make one mark. And that first mark is going to be at five foot pounds. And then we're going to go around in another crisscross pattern and take it to the final seven foot pounds. And I'll put a second mark. That way I can keep up with where I am on all these. All right, everybody looks like they've got one mark on them now. So let's go around one more time, taking it to seven. It won't take much, I promise. Maybe a tenth of a turn on each one of these. And last but not least, up. Oh, see, I would have missed one. This is how the marking came in. I never went back and redid this one. I think that's got it. While we're at it, let's go ahead and hit this oil drain bolt. That's 16 foot pounds. Okay, now let's take a feel of the crankshaft. Feels just like it should. Yeah, all that's feeling good. At this point, we can go ahead and remove this additional gasket material because I really don't want to forget about it and then have it fall down in there. All right, that's looking good initially. Let's flip it over, go ahead and get the the shifter operational. That way we can run it through the gears before we go any further. Because like I said, if there's a problem, we need to find it now. So it's bolt, arm, washer, spring. So that's what the final part looks like. And that all goes right in here. taking it to nine foot pounds. So our pin is in place and it needs to line up with that little notch right there. But we need to pull that arm out of the way. Just grab a screwdriver, pull that spring back or the arm back against the spring to get this all in place. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. Just grab that one edge with the screwdriver. Needs to line up with that pin. So set it in, turn it, and you'll feel it drop in. All right, she dropped in. Now I've got a little bit of red Loctite on my bolt. I'm gonna bottom it out. And this is a 12 millimeter. And then we're gonna take it to 16 foot pounds. No idea what gear we're in. We'll go ahead and bring it down until she stops. Oh, we were evidently in a high gear. 16 on the nose. Now, let's bring her back down. All right, that should be neutral. Mm -hmm. Because the main can spin and I'm holding the output, the counter, still. So that's neutral. So let's bring it up one. That should be second. Third, fourth, fifth. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to leave it in neutral. It should be right there. So what was happening there, those grooves that I showed you earlier on the shift drum, is each detent, those grooves changed, either higher or lower, and then in turn moved the shift forks that would either engage or disengage each gear. So in between those three shift points, that's how you're getting all your gear changes through elevation changes inside on the shaft itself. And the detent is what actually stops it at each level, if you want to call it that. So right now we're in neutral because I can hold the, the output shaft or the counter shaft and spin the main. And we just went through two through five and then all the way back down into first, which was down here, and then neutral, which is pointing at that shift detent itself. So that is it. And you'll notice that the other protrusions are a lot larger as far as going, you know, having the arm go in, and that's why it's so easy to get it to move out of neutral. I mean, I can actually turn it with my fingers, but that right there is neutral. Kind of cool, huh? All right, with that out of the way, let's finish up our shift detent and springs and whatnot. All right, let's take her down into first. These little springs go inside of these pins and they set back in here. Next, these prawls, I think that's how they pronounce them, go in like this. And just hold that with your finger. Where's the other one? There we go. Now, you're holding a bomb in your hand. <laughs> so we don't want this all flying across the room. So the trick is to hold all this together. Now let's see if we can slide this guide plate over it without pulling this too far and releasing all of that and sending it flying across the room and slide it down in here. There we go. That wasn't that fun. All right, we've got a little bit of Loctite on these two and we're gonna take them to seven foot-pounds. All right, add a little bit of lube. Keep everybody happy at startup. Now there's one special washer or collar that goes right here. Let's put a little bit of lube on our shift spindle. And make sure you're not missing that little washer along with that snap ring. Of course, I never removed it, so it's good to go. And we want the spring, the two ends of it, to straddle around this bolt. And then we want to line up the other end with that collar that we just talked about. There you go. And yeah, believe it or not, the only thing that holds that in is that little half circle right there. Because when we eventually put on this uh, outer case, you can see where it lines up. But for right now, don't hit it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and flip her back over. Go ahead and get us set up for the, uh, the oil pump. Get that taken care of first. I'm surprised I didn't notice this, guys, when we're not ready to put it on yet. But um, this motor has a little bit of a history here because this is the pickup tube. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like somebody got a little carried away with some of their sealant somewhere in the engine, and eventually it made its way down here. Now I'm going to spray this out, but I might just go order another one if I can't get happy with it. But it doesn't look too bad, honestly. I just thought it was interesting that uh, evidently somebody was trying to seal up a, a section, maybe a drain bolt, and um, use too much. There you go. Ends up in places it shouldn't be. But actually that did what, exactly what it was supposed to. It stopped it from going inside of the, uh, the oil pump. 
All right, since we've got the engine flipped up on this side, let's focus on our chain, uh, the, the guide for it, our oil pump, and then there's a pickup tube, and then the counterbalancer. And with the counterbalancer in place, then we can flip the engine back over and start uh, addressing some of the, uh, the timing issues and the gearing and you know, working our way toward the clutch and the Kickstarter. But let's start by getting our new Weissco chain in place. And we will need to oil this before we complete it, but I don't want to do that yet because it's kind of going to make a mess if I do. Next, we've got our guide, and basically there's a washer down at the bottom, the guide, but most importantly, there is a collar that goes on the inside of the guide. Let's do a little bit of Loctite on this bolt. Then we're going to torque it to nine foot-pounds. Next, let's get in our pickup tube. And just do a little bit of assembly lube on both this little O-ring and this holder up top to make this a little bit easier to install because these definitely need to seal up correctly. So they need to go in smooth. There it goes. Now there's a plate up top. One of the block bolts that I'd already torqued down has a dual purpose, kind of like the one over here. There's a plate that holds the pickup tube. Very important. So we're going to extract it, get that plate in, and then retorque it. Now, that little guy locks around the tube just like so. Next, let's go ahead and do this upper holder, if you want to call it that. Blue Loctite, as always. Pretty much all of your six millimeter threads, they're going to end up being seven foot pounds. Now, let's focus in on our oil pump gear. So, basically, you've got this pin that goes through, and then it rests inside of here, and then there's this teeny tiny little clip that holds it. And when you go to put this clip on, just spread it enough to get over the end of the shaft. Because if you go too far and bend it, it's game over for that one. All right, let's go ahead and get a little bit of lube directly into those needle bearings in here. Now we can go ahead and pass through our counterbalance. Now when you're putting this in, be careful and don't damage that gear for the oil pump because it's plastic. All right, no timing involved over on this side, but this does drive the oil pump. There we go. Now when I go to attach the, uh, the other gear, this potentially can slide right out. So I th when we set the engine down, when we at least get the timing set for this, we're going to leave the engine pretty much straight up and down. Otherwise, I mean, gravity is going to do what gravity does. And uh, that gear will probably fall out. So we've got a couple of retention pieces to get in here first. And as always, you know I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite. We'll take these to seven as well. So let's get our driven gear onto our counterbalance. And you'll see this notch up in here. That is going to align with that dot. And see, so you'll see one spline that's been flattened out. That's going to keep you from really installing it in any other location. And if you have to force it on, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Next, same kind of scenario for this dot and then this section where there are no splines. That's where it goes. And we've already got some grease in there, but we'll put some assembly lube just so it goes into that seal 
easily. All right, next, as we're pushing this gear down, we have one more alignment to do, and that's to put these two dots together as we're pushing down there. And that's what yours should look like. Now, let's get this weight, make sure it's pointing out. And once again, it's got that same notch, follow that up top, like so. Then you have this washer, that thick one, and then this crazy bolt of theirs, which we need the special tool to tighten down. And this is that special tool that we're gonna need to get that torque down. Now to hold this still, they make a holder to go up inside here, but honestly, you can just use a soft piece of metal, like a brass or, or an aluminum, just to pinch up in there to hold it enough to where we can get this torqued. Now, that alignment up there also led to another dot here, which is still in line with this one, so we know we've got it right. So here's that little gear holder I was talking about. Like I said, you can just use a piece of aluminum or brass. And we're gonna be taking that to 33 foot pounds. Next, let's get our primary drive gear on. Same thing with the uh, non-splined area. And once more, you're gonna see, guess what? Some more dots line up. Here, here, and here. All right, now this is going to take 80 foot-pounds, and no, we do not want to put that much stress on these smaller gears because that would probably damage them, and that's not what we're here to do. So what we're going to do is take our old clutch basket and just lay it in there temporarily and then use our gear holder to get in here. Then we're gonna torque this to 80 foot-pounds. But keep in mind, we're not actually going to use this particular clutch basket because we're going to a Wisco clutch kit. Because if you look at the, uh, the, the basket on this one, she is worn out and it's gonna be a heck of an upgrade by the time we're done. But we can use it for right now to go ahead and torque this to 80 foot-pounds. All right, so that finishes up our timing with our primary and secondary gears. We're gonna rotate the engine around, lay it back up on its side, and then go ahead and install the stator in the rotor, and I am not gonna put this nasty cover back on there, so I've ordered a new one. So we do need to transfer over the stator and the pickup coil over to the new piece and then get it bolted back down. All right. Before we start diving into this, we do need to be a little bit careful to make sure that shift shaft ain't gonna come out. So we're gonna put that board right on the edge of it. There. There's a few things we need to transfer over, one being that pressure relief valve, of course our stator, and then our pickup coil. So let's get those pulled. Now, if you don't have one of these impact tools, you really should. So many times I've seen these, or if you didn't have this tool, you just round that Phillips head off and makes for a long afternoon. Slippery, there we go. Right, we're gonna lay that to the side because we have another passageway and a circlip down there we need to remove. All right, since we've got our circlip pliers here, let's go and remove this relief valve circlip. There we go. And since we are changing out this outer cover, there is actually a washer and then below that there is a seal which of course it needs to be in good shape because your oil pump is pumping directly through that case, through the oil filter, and one of its pathways is straight into your crankshaft. So that needs to be sealed up. 
Now, I would recommend replacing this, if, even if you weren't replacing your, your housing, but we are, so this is working out well for us. But the only thing I did have to go extract was just this washer. So now I've got my new seal from Weissco, and we're just gonna drive it in to the bottom of our new case. And actually, not a whole lot of driving to be done because it's a small seal, just push it in with your finger. Then our washer, and then we can put our circlip on. Let's make sure we go back in the same direction we came out because there's a little bit sharper edge and we want it facing up. And if the circlip doesn't fit, that tells me that I did not push it down far enough. Waiting for that satisfying click. There she goes. Mm-hmm. She is in. So that's everything we're gonna need out of this one. So now we can transfer over our relief valve. But let's put a little bit of assembly lube so we don't damage that O-ring as we're pressing it into the new case. Piece of cake. Get our snap ring. Same game. Now, let's get the old sealant cleaned off of our wiring harness. Yeah, because I don't want to find that in the, uh, the old pickup strainer. And we'll clean it up. A little bit of contact cleaner. Put some new sealant on. And then we'll get it pushed into place. All right, guys, be careful when you're doing this. Make sure that that stator winding wire goes behind the pickup and then bring it out dead center. And don't forget this bracket because what's gonna be spinning right above it is the rotor. And we'd rather that not act like a buzz saw and <laughs> cut that in half. So that's what it should look like as you're getting it back together. Now we're gonna go ahead and at least get these started. Now it doesn't call for it, but you know me, a little bit of Loctite is a good thing. The stator, it only goes in there one way. So make sure you've got it rotated, otherwise, holes are not going to line up. All right. So let's get our dowels in. So we've got our, our engine case ready to go. Let's go ahead and get our rotor mounted up, get our key in place. Let's get just a little dab of grease or assembly lube just to hold this in place. It doesn't take much. And we want to angle it just ever so slightly where to engage into the rotor without a problem. That looks like it. Washer, our main nut. All right guys, we need to torque this to 47 foot pounds and they make a holder. I can show you kind of what it looks like. It's designed like this, but the one I have I could probably put in a couple of spacers and get it to hold still, but what I can do is just use that gear holder one more time on the other side and go ahead and get that 47 foot pounds. So let's grab our clutch, old clutch, one more time. This is a 17. Be careful of your chain. Here's my gear holder, so we want to keep it from turning this direction. Okay, 47, coming up. There we go. Take our clutch back off. So now let's lay in the gasket over the dowels. We've got a little bit of Honda Bond on these two corners right here to get that transition to seal up. I want to put just a little bit of assembly lube on the end because there's a new seal that this is going to be going into and we want that to go in smoothly. 
And I believe that's it, guys and girls. We're ready to get our bolts in place, but I want to forewarn you. There are four different lengths of bolts for each of these. Now, some of them, it's really obvious where they go, and others, not so much. So if you would, reference our exploded parts diagrams. That way, you will be sure to get everything in the right place. We've got them all in place. Now, what I'm going to do is just seat them, and then we're going to go around, and we're going to torque each one of these to nine foot-pounds. And the drain plug bolt goes to 12. Let's pop on a new O-ring for our oil filter cover. Then we're going to put a little bit of lube around it so it'll slide in there easily. Don't forget your spring. And be sure you put this on the correct way. Like that. And this only goes in one way. Same torque as the other bolts, so that's going to be nine. And we will temporarily install this little sight window. Of course, we're going to have to go back to set the timing once we do the top end. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up building the bottom end, and that also will end this particular video. Now, if you would like to continue watching me putting this engine together, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when we drop the next video. Well, listen, if you have any questions or comments thus far, why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, like I said, hit that subscribe button. Beyond that, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Parkzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.